Hello and a warm welcome. This is News Plus on Viewer Television and I am Chinon Sopam with the updates. Our Vice President Kashim Shetima has appealed to Nigerians and stakeholders to see the Great Green Wall Initiative as an emergency rescue operation. The Vice President Shetima declared that the cost of not completing it was threatening the collective existence of the people. The Vice President was speaking at the inaugural Great Green Wall Day celebration at the State House Conference Center in Abuja, where he delivered the keynote address. He called on all stakeholders to invest in the actualization of the transformative initiative while highlighting the need to prioritize the project. A Vice President Shatima said that Nigeria took up the challenge to partake in the Pan-African mission to save the world. And now President Bola Tinubu has written to the National Assembly for the approval of $800 million loan to support poor and vulnerable Nigerians in coping with their basic needs. Reading Tinubu's letter on Thursday's plenary, President of the Senate, Godswill Lapabio, said the loan is for the national social safety net window of the federal government. According to the request, the World Bank facility will aid the federal government to make unconditional cash transfer of 8,000 euro per month to 12 million poor and low-income households for a period of six months, with a multiplier effect on about 60 million individuals. Request for approval of additional financing of the National Social Safety Net Program. Approved an additional loan facility to the tune of USD no, 800 million to be secured from the World Bank for the National Social Safety Net Program. You may also wish to note that the purpose of the facility is to expand coverage of shock responsive safety net support for the poor and vulnerable Nigerians and to help them cope with the cost of meeting basic needs. And it is expected that the program will stimulate economic activities in the informal sector and improve nutrition for beneficial households. You recall that the Federal Executive Council led by President Mohamed Buhari had in May this year approved an additional loan facility to the tune of $800 million to be secured from the World Bank for the National Social Safety Net Program. And the president of the Nigerian Senate, Godswe Lapabio, has assured the Turkish government of Nigeria's readiness to sustain the bilateral agreement reached between both countries in the area of education, health, and military collaboration to fight terrorism and insecurity. He also promised that the Senate will do everything humanly possible to ensure that the age-long bilateral relations and collaboration in critical sectors continue in the overall interests of the Nigeria and Turkey. Apabio stated this while receiving the Turkish ambassador to Nigeria, he died by Rakta, who visited him in his office. Earlier, the Turkish ambassador congratulated Apabio on his emergence as president of the 10th Senate, assuring the Senate leadership of improved bilateral relations between Nigeria and Turkey. And the House of Representatives has approved the request of President Bola Tinubu for an amendment to the 2022 Appropriation Act. The approval followed Tinubu's request for 500 billion naira for palliatives to Nigerians in order to reduce the hardship caused by subsidy removal. The amendment passed the first, second, and the third reading during plenary on Wednesday. However, the House on Thursday approved the President's request after members of the House made contributions. And now the House of Representatives has mandated the Committee on Pilgrims Affairs, when constituted, to conduct a detailed investigation into the several anomalies that emanated from the recently concluded 2023 Hajj exercise. This was sequel to the adoption of a motion by the member from Oyo State, Stanley Olajide, at Thursday's plenary. The lawmaker stated that Nigerian pilgrims were subjected to untold hardship during the 2023 Hajj exercise from the inability of some airlines such as ARIC to lift pilgrims due to lack of aircraft as well as inadequate tent accommodation at Mina and Arafat. 
He added that some tour operators perpetrated the worst form of unprofessionalism by failing to provide services promised to pilgrims in terms of accommodation, tents, feeding, or transportation. Further note that the VIP pilgrims were made to pay 5,000 US dollars, 8,000 riyals, 18,000 riyals for VIP tents. And despite this exorbitant amount, Mr. Speaker, pilgrims were stranded while others got tents of lesser value that they paid for. Mr. Speaker, again, note that some tour operators perpetrated the worst form of unprofessionalism by failing to provide services promised to pilgrims in terms of accommodation, tent, feeding and transportation. Mr. Speaker, the stop idea was the absence of emergency medical services for sick patients in distress at Mina Camp, as many district patients were, could not even access uh, ambulance services to the camp. Adopting the motion, the House also mandated the Committee on Legislative Compliance to ensure implementation. Now let's go on a quick break. There's more when News Plus returns. Gentlemen, <laughs> I'm at the Envoy Hotel Diplomatic Drive 305 here for a business weekend. It's been an amazing stay. Conference hall and business facilities here are stylish and innovative. The Envoy Hotel is luxury, esoteric. Opulence for ultimate comfort. First century where all the information we need is now in the palm of our hands. News from around the world, entertainment, celebrity gossip, sports, and much more. The only thing that you need is the right source. Viewer TV is now on the go. Simply check us out on our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter for all the information you need.
Welcome back. You're still watching News Plus on Viewer Television. And now the House of Representatives member has called on the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAM, to extend the validity of the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination to three years. The lower legislative chamber made the request while calling on JAM to conduct the UTME at least twice a year. This motion was moved by the lawmaker representing Ekiti, not one federal constituency, akin to the Rotimi, who expressed concerns that the UTME result is valid for just one year. While moving the motion, Rotimi said it is worrisome that if candidates cannot secure admission into any tertiary institution of their choice in the concerned academic year, the result becomes useless. In his ruling, Speaker of the House of Reps, Tajuddin Abbas, said an ad hoc committee will be constituted to interface with the Federal Ministry of Education to ensure compliance. And the Federal Capital Territory Administration has approved the payment of the sum of 2.25 billion naira as pension and gratuity payments, as well as group life insurance claims for 445 retirees, including families of some deceased officers of the FCT. The director FCT Pension Department, Rotini Ajayi, made this known during a stakeholders meeting with the pension dex officers of the various secretaries, departments, and agencies in Abuja on Thursday. And according to him, the sum will also include the 2019 arrears benefit of the affected staff, adding that the approval is for accrued benefit to 197 staff who retired from secretaries, departments, and agencies of the FCT administration while the other 248 persons were next of kin to the deceased. Ajayi Act explained that the FCTA will ensure that the accrued right benefits were paid to staff who were in service before the Pension Reform Act of 2004 that birthed the contributory pension scheme. He revealed that the approval was a sequel to the payment into the beneficiary's retirement savings account to access the retirement benefits from their pension fund administrators, adding that the payment also covered for the 2019 arrears based on salary increments. And now a High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has issued a one-week ultimatum to the Department of State Security Service to either charge the detained suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefili, to court or release him. Justice Hamza Mwaz, who gave the order while delivering a ruling in a fundamental human rights suit instituted against the DSS and orders by Emefili. Justice Mwazu held that the DSS has the power to carry out its constitutional duties of making arrests, detaining, and ensuring the prevention of internal crime. However, he maintained that such duties must be carried out within the ambience of the law. In the suit instituted on his behalf by the senior advocate of Nigeria, Joseph Duada, the suspended CBN governor had applied that his arrest and detention since June 10th without valid order of court has voided and set aside. And the new theater commander of operations, Hadid Kai Major General G.U. Chibuisi, has said plans have already been strategized to conclude the fight against terrorism in the Northeast region. He disclosed this during a takeover of command from the outgoing theater commander, Major General Ibrahim Ali. The former theater commander of operations, Hadid Kal, says he is happy that over 100,000 Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists surrendered, which indicates that the insecurity crisis is close to an end despite some challenges still needs to be tackled. He added that in his new assignment, he will continue the work of ensuring that peace is completely restored in northeast region of Nigeria. When I go there, I will try and make sure that I see if I can apply the same thing or even better so that we can bring this uh, insurgency and terrorism in Nigeria and other uh, contiguous uh, countries in the northeastern part of Nigeria to an end. Yeah. If it is necessary for us to conduct uh, special operations, we shall do. What is important is for us to see how we can bring the crisis to an end so that people can return 
to their normal lives and improve on their livelihood. It's a very serious assignment we have here. Um, a lot of effort has gone in, into this operation and we are at a crucial stage in our plans. So I will continue to solicit the support of all stakeholders because we are going to give it our best shot and God willing, we will be able to conclude this. Thank you. And now an update on the IPOP situation. A federal high court in Abuja has dismissed the fundamental rights enforcement suit filed by Namdi Kanu, leader of the prescribed indigenous people of Piafra against the Department of State Services. Kanu, in the suit filed by his lawyer, had sued the Director General of the DSS and the Attorney General of the Federation as first to third respondents, respectively. He alleged that the security outfit, while allowing other inmates in their custody the freedom to choose and wear any clothes of their choice, was restricted to wearing only a single clothing. But in a counter affidavit filed by the DSS and its DG, they urged the courts to dismiss Kanu's claims. Justice James Omotosho, in a judgment, held that Kanu's suit lacked merit and dismissed it. And on the international scene, Kenya's interior ministry has said more than 300 people, including a lawmaker, had been arrested following violent anti-government protests that led seven people dead. There were deadly clashes and looting on Wednesday in parts of the East African nation as protests took to the streets over tax hikes and economic pressures in defiance of a government ban. Police have been accused of a heavy-handed response and criticized for using tear gas against civilians, including at a school where dozens of children were hospitalized. Opposition leader Riley Odinga, who called the protest, has vowed to keep up the street action until cost of living pressures calm down. The death toll from the unrest rose to seven after a man died in clashes between rival groups in Sondu on the border of Kericho and Kisumu, the later and Odinga stronghold. Hospital doctors in England on Thursday staged the biggest walkout in the history of the UK's state-funded National Health Service, prompting fears for patient safety. The unprecedented five-day stoppage over pay and staff retention is the latest in eight months of industrial action across the NHS, which is already reeling from a vast pandemic backlog. Nurses, ambulance staff, and other medical workers have all joined picket lines in recent months, adding to pressures on patients' appointments. The industrial action by junior doctors, those below consultant level, will run until Tuesday. A senior hospital doctor known as consultants in England will also begin a 48-hour strike on July 20th, with radiographers following suit from July 25th. And now the U.S. government has approved the first ever over-the-counter pet control pill. The Food and Drug Administration announced on Thursday pet control pill or pill will be available without a prescription for women of all ages. In a statement, the agency said the move would help reduce women's barriers to assessing contraceptions. Doctors say that the progestin only pill, often known as the mini pill, is a particularly safe form of contraception because it does not contain oestrogen, meaning it has fewer side effects and health risks. The approval comes after an FDA expert advisory panel in May unanimously voted to recommend the pill be available over the counter by 2024. And over in Ukraine, airstrikes on Kiev wounded at least four people, authorities said on Thursday, with explosions heard across the Ukrainian capital in the third night of attacks. Emergency services were responding to calls in Solomversky, Shurizversky, Pidolsky, and Dansky district following explosions in the capital. Kiev Major Vital Hliski said two people were wounded in Dansky as a result of falling debris. 
Pope Key, the head of Kiev's military administration, disclosed this. Fires broke out in an apartment building in Sliversky in a non-residential building in Podilsky, he said, adding emergency services were on site. The threat of attack by Russian drones on the city remained, Ukraine's Air Force said in a statement. Now, French prosecutors said Thursday they had opened an investigation after the discovery of a severe fingertip in a letter addressed to the presidential palace. The gruesome find was reported by staff working for President Emmanuel Macron at the beginning of the week, with police called in to investigate. According to the Villiers Aculis magazine, which first reported the story, the fingertip is believed to belong to the sender of the letter who suffers from psychiatric problems. A source close to the investigation disclosed between 1,000 to 1,500 emails and letters are addressed to the Macron each day and they are monitored and scanned by a 70-strong team working from offices away from the main LC Palace in central Paris. And that's all on News Plus. Many thanks for watching. I am Chinon Sopan. Please do stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs.